Badgers eat wood? It sounds really sad. Um, and that's probably because it is. Hello, beautiful people. What is going on? What have you guys done to the weather? It is freezing. I've got my jumper on. I've had my jumper on all summer. It's horrible. I should have a really good tan. I've not got one. Still freezing cold. That air con, I've got the heater on in there. Today, we are up to something a bit different. Now, I've got the topper on because we need to come and manage some of this grassland a little bit because we've got so much grass <laughs> this year. I keep saying it, we've got loads of grass. I mean, just look at this. This hasn't been long grazed and it's just crazy how much there is. Look, it's just nuts. But one thing we do have is we've got a load of thistles that need sorting out and we've got a lot of this kind of, this feels not too bad for it, but a lot of what we call bents. I don't know if that's the technical term for them, but these kind of like long, wispy, crappy grasses. They go to seed and they're just like super thin. They're not very palatable and cows don't like them. They'll eat a bit, but they don't like a lot of it. What it does is it's just taking up nutrients. It's taking up uh, space, sunlight, if we ever actually get any. So we're trying to just top them out and improve the quality of the grass that we've got here for the cows and get rid of some of these bents. Tidy the fields up, get rid of some thistles, and we're going around periodically behind the cows. Now this one's been uh, about a week or so since it's been grazed, so I'm trying to be a bit closer, but I'm also trying to get around them all as well while I've got the topper on and before it comes sunny and we actually end up combining and whatever else we end up doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and waz around this, top this field, I've got some more to up the village and I've got to go to Thornton, I think, at some point. But whether I get there before we actually get busy combining or whatever, I don't know. But uh, yeah, before that, we'll get this one done first. Then we'll worry about where we go next. this out this is a bit weird I've, so I've just been I've just finished this one so this is all done as you can see which is nice and I drove past this gate which is part of our riparian strip so we've got a brook line that runs all the way along there and then it joins to a, goes that way and it comes this way and we've got this riparian strip here which is fenced off it's part of our mid-tier scheme and um, I've got to go in there and top all that actually once we get like September October onwards and manage some of the growth and we put a new hedge around there and all sorts of stuff because that was an old knackered hedge and it's come really well as you can see just like looks really good so anyway I digress I've just come along and something's been chewing our fence along here look at that it's chewing there and it's chewed the gates chewed the gates here and I'm not really sure what it is because part of me I, I, I don't feel like I could believe that it's cows because they're on rotation so they're only in here for a day so we do like for those of you who don't know, we do daily moves. So the cows get like a day's worth of grass, and then they move to the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and so on, around the farm. So I just don't feel like they would come in here and choose to chew on the fence over eating the grass. I just, I don't think that's the thing. I wonder what it is. Anyone got any ideas? I don't know, seems odd. It's like the bottom ones. Could badgers? I don't know, maybe? Badgers eat wood? They eat hedgehogs. One thing I want to point out about this pasture like what we're doing on this grass is we're not like top it I'm not topping it right low I'm still leaving all the lush grass in the bottom so I'm kind of carrying the topper more than actually running it I'm not trying to mow it down short I'm just trying to get rid of all that wispy horrible grass because I'm trying to keep all of this nice lush stuff in the bottom ready for the cows to come back around this field has only had about i think it was was it 12 kilograms of nitrogen to the hectare put on with the tone fur earlier in the year so it's all been foliar fed and that i mean that tone fur is amazing i get lots of questions about it it's awesome it's amazing it works i haven't had it back on farm yet i don't know if we will i haven't spoken to the guys for a little while but 
it is an amazing bit of kit. It's not cheap, but it is good. And that's all this has had. And it, it stayed super green. I know we've had a lot of rain, um, but it has performed really well this year, despite the lack of nitrogen that's been put on it. Now I did mention that we do the, obviously rotational grazing, so we're moving them every single day. Now one thing about growing more grass, if you wanna grow grass on farm, I'm still learning a lot. And I like, I know dad and I like to read a lot of books about grass, which is, sounds really sad. Um, and that's probably because it is. So we read a lot of books about grass and one of the things that you'll read often when you're talking about grass is if you're trying to get more grass on your farm, you need to give it a rest period. So you need to keep moving those cows on and on and on. But also, if you just stick with your grass for a little while before you jump into doing lots of reseeds and you keep moving them up, letting that grass regenerate, you get that natural selection in your grass species for grasses that suit that system. So they'll grow faster than all the other grasses. So that's probably one of the reasons why we've got such a good grass cover now, because we're sort of two or three years down the road and those grass species have started to naturally select themselves. So even in parts of this field where we don't normally get a lot of grass, we're starting to get a lot of grass, especially on fields like that one over there. Straight, that's the one that we reseeded because that one was terrible and there wasn't really any grass in that. It was all weeds. But that one now it's been reseeded and we just keep going across it. We're actually grazing that one more often than we're grazing some of these other fields because it's just thriving because those species were put in specifically for rotational grazing. You seem to kind of get more clovers and stuff like that in the fields as well, which is quite cool. It's quite a nice little thing to have. Anyway, we need to go and do a bit more. So we've got some more grass to go and look at and uh, go and tidy up. Right, so I'm now up the village to come and top this paddock here, because what we've done is we've put a center fence up this field so that we can do a rotation like up that side, down this side, and then there's a load more grazing through there but it just makes the whole system a little bit easier for us. And then we have the trailer with the water on and a tank off that that we just tow around. So I'm just gonna come in here and, and tidy up this side. This field just doesn't have the best grass. A lot of it isn't even grass. Like that's not grass. I don't know what that is, but it's not grass. They eat it though. Realistically, this kind of wants reseeding, but this is some rented ground. So it's not really up to us whether we reseed it or not and, and what we do with it. So. We just have to kind of work with what we've got. And what we've tried to do is just to, like I said earlier, just graze this more often, get the cattle round it more on rotation regularly, and hopefully get that grass working for us. We've got some cattle up there. There's some fat heifers. We're gonna take a look at them in a minute. And we're getting to the stage now where there's probably a few too many up here. And we, we need to take some back home and then just have a bit of a shuffle round and see what we can do with them. But I'll top this first, then we're gonna have a look at them. Right, that's that one done. Something about sitting in that cab in the warm, oh, makes you so sleepy. And actually, I'm glad the sun's come out because I was starting to feel like my sunglasses were, um, you know, wishful thinking, but turns out not so much. These are the heifers from last year. So they're doing all right. They're out here on a grazing rotation. So they're here and then on the grass that's the other side of the wood. They're growing pretty well, actually. We're quite chuffed with them, but they've got to the stage now where they're probably out grazing the amount of grass that we've got here. And they probably want to go onto something with a bit more poke in it, some more legumes, some herbal lays or some white clover lays, whatever, and just get that move on a little bit more. But I'm quite pleased with them. They look pretty good. These are all Charolais crosses as well. They're none of the stabilizers are in here because all the stabilizers got to the correct weight for bulling. So we bulled them all. We don't know if they're in calf yet because I haven't PD'd them, but once we do, obviously if they're not, then they'll go back in here. If they are, then great. We've also got an old cool cow in with these as well because it just makes them a lot easier to move and get in. She's the only cool cow we got left, but it just makes them a little bit easier to handle. I don't know if you've noticed on the ear tags as well, if you see on their right-hand ear tag, left-hand as we look at them, you'll see the initials. And what we've been doing is we've been putting the initials of the bull. So each bull's just got like an acronym 
that goes with them. So LU, which is this one, is Lewis. PA is Paul, so on and so forth. So we know which ones their dads are. Obviously you can go through the paperwork, but it's just a bit easier to do it eye to eye. So you can see what's performing better and you know what you might need to look at. And if you get a bull that's underperforming, you can do something about it, can't you? Because you just have a bit of a general trend. Anyway, these are looking, they're looking pretty good. Quite pleased with them. Just want to push them on a bit now. Now it's starting to get towards the ends of the uh, fat bulls. It's probably a good idea to start getting these guys moving. Anyway, that's enough for today. Hopefully that bit of topping will even that half of the field up and I'll come back and I'll do this half once they've got off of here. Got to go to Thornton at some point. Don't know when that's going to be. Anyway, for now, I'm going to head back to the yard. Right, I'm going to wrap it up there for another week because Thornton's going to have to wait. The sun has made an appearance and I think we're going to go and get some silage in done. I know what you're thinking. You don't need many more silage. Yeah, we, we got a lot of silage, but no I'm getting any more. So look forward to that video because that one will be awesome. Whatever you're up to this weekend, have a great one. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da!